Hello guys, it's David and today I'm going to show you how I use Lightroom to create a video LUT that you can use in Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro. So since I come from a photography background, I have a ton of presets in Lightroom and really wanted to get my videos to have a similar look as some of my stills. Since there's no built-in functionality to create a LUT in Lightroom, I started looking around the internet and I came across a plugin called Export LUT by a guy named John Rellis. The plugin is free for small cube files, but if you want high quality and accurate LUTs, the full license is 10 bucks. Once you download and extract the zip file, you'll want to open up Lightroom. Then you're going to click on File, Plugin Manager, and then Add. Just point the finder to where you extracted the plugin and you're all set. I have a specific folder I keep all my plugins in, but you may just uh, keep it in your downloads folder or wherever it is. And then just click on Done, and we're going to move on to Premiere first. So here I have a clip that I want to apply a look to in Lightroom. Just a short Rec 709 clip with some decent dynamic range. Uh, first thing you want to do is make sure your color correction has been made. White balance and exposure. That way you have a good baseline to work with in Lightroom. You'll be able to add contrast, saturation, and all that later. Now if your file is log footage, that'll work as well, so just leave it as log. And if it's Rec 709, that's fine too. So now we need to find a frame that represents the look of the image very well and contains a good balance of highlights and shadows. This way when we make our edits we'll know if something is clipping or blown out. This spot right here has a very bright spot in the sun and some dark spots down here so this one's perfect. Just click on the camera icon right here. We'll name this one LUT Tutorial Dash Premiere. Make sure our file format is TIFF. Select where we want to save the file to. Make sure import into project is not selected and then just click on OK. We now have our frame saved as a TIFF file. All right, so now let's go into Final Cut Pro and I'll show you how to save a frame there as well. It's a little more involved, but pretty straightforward overall. Okay, so here's the same exact frame. Now we're gonna to need to go to File then share, then save current frame. So by default, this will not be here. So you'll need to go to add destination. From here, you can drag save current frame to the list. So for now, let's just close this out and actually go to file, then share again and save current frame. The default settings are all right, nothing to change here. So we can just click on next. And then just save it to whatever location you need. Uh, the location doesn't really matter as we'll be moving these out of these folders eventually once we import them into Lightroom. So I'm just going to name this one LUT Tutorial Final Cut Pro X. And we can see that this one is in the same folder as our Premiere version. So let's get into Lightroom. You'll want to go into the library module and then you click on import. Then we're going to select the folder where we save the files to. Uh, we don't need both of them, so we can just uncheck one and just keep the other. Just make sure we have the proper folder where we're going to save these two. Make sure no develop presets are being added. And then just click on import. Now we have our frame imported into Lightroom. So now we want to go into develop module. Here we can make any changes we want. I'm going to use a preset I know looks good on this image. You can see this preset added grain. We'll fix that in a moment. Now before we create the LUT, we need to disable certain modules. Uh, you'll want to make sure there are no brushes applied here or any gradients, radio filters, anything like that. Um, you want to turn off detail. Um, also, we're going to turn off lens corrections and then transform. And the big one is effects, which will get rid of that grain for us. Now, the reason we did this is because LUTs uh, or lookup tables do not take any of that information into consideration. They only deal with color and luminance. So any of those special effects won't do anything for it and might actually just mess up the LUT. So I'm just going to make a couple more tweaks here before we create this LUT. Uh, change the white balance a little bit, warm it up a little bit more. Yeah, just like that. 
pull up the black point a tiny bit. I think I'm happy with that. So now we'll go to File, Plugin Extras, and Export LUT. And you'll get this window. So make sure Selected Photo is selected. And then for Color Profile, I've had the best luck with sRGB. Although you're free to experiment with any other ones in there, I just find that sRGB gives me the best uh, results. So for quality, I usually use high 64. If you have the free version, you'll only be able to use low 16, I believe. Um, I've tried the maximum version a couple times uh, with no success. It's just locked up my computer, but your mileage may vary. And then we just want to make sure we're saving this to the correct folder. Hit choose. And then uh, make sure that's unchecked. And then just hit export. And now we have our cube file. I'm going to rename it to something that represents exactly what it does. So this will be uh, Rec 709 to Retrograde 5. Uh, retrograde 5 being the preset name. Uh, so in my case, this is Rec 709. So if you're using log footage, you probably want to name it something specifically the color profile you're using. So for example, if the footage was shot using a GH4 in Cine like D, you would name it G4 Cine like D to Retrograde 5. This is important as applying a LUT to a color space it was not meant to will not be accurate and can lead to some pretty odd results. Okay, so now we'll open up Premiere again. Uh, this is not Premiere. And now what we're gonna do is go into Lumetri Color and we'll go down to the Creative tab. Then you're gonna click on Look, Browse, and then we're gonna find our LUT. Then click on Open, and boom. Now we have our look applied to the clip, and if we look at Lightroom, it matches pretty well with this version. And we could take this a little bit further and apply this LUT to other clips like this one right over here. Actually, let's uh, let's remove the LUT, and we're going to build an adjustment layer so that we can apply the look over all our clips in the same time. So we'll just go to Adjustment Layer, drag that over here, drag it over both our clips, then in here we go to the Creative tab, go to Look and Browse, click on our LUT, and now both clips have the exact same look. This will work as long as your clips are all in the same color space. So if your clips are all 709, then they'll all look like this. Uh, if you have a mix of Rec. 709 and log footage, you may not get the same results. I mean, it's just the complexities of working with different types of clips. And here it is on and off. Leave it on again. We can mess with the intensity here. If we don't like it at full power, we can add adjustments like faded film, of course, some sharpening. I usually add about anywhere between 10 and 20 sharpening. Looks good right about there. So now let's do the same thing in Final Cut Pro. So to apply a LUT in Final Cut, you'll need a plugin like this one from Pixel Film Studios. I'll put a link in the description below where you can get it. So what we need to do is just drag the effect over our clips, and then in the window, we're going to click on external LUT, find our cube file, and then just click on open. And that's it. Now you have uh, your LUT applied to your image. Here's off and then on. And then we can do the same thing to the second image. Just choose external LUT. Same thing here. And then click on open. And here it is off, then on. And just like in Premiere Pro, you have all these uh, settings you can mess with, mix, saturation, brightness, all that good stuff. So that's about it for this week, guys. I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. I know it's been very, very useful for me, especially coming from a photography background. So make sure you guys give this a thumbs up if you liked it, and please subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.